Hello everyone. You must have solved many questions on integration, but today let's see what is integration so that we understand the concept of integration much better. So, let's start. Now we have formulae to calculate areas of regular shapes like rectangle, square, circles and many other regular shapes. But how do we find the area of a region like this? As you can see, it has no regular shape. Now let me also show you another scenario. Here is a speeding car whose velocity time graph can be given in this way as you can see the graph is a straight line. Now what will be the area under this graph? Let's see. Yes, it will be a triangle. And what is the area of a triangle? We all know that it's half base into height. The base here is the time and the height here is the velocity. And what is velocity into time? Yes, it's the distance. That means the area under the velocity time graph will be nothing but the distance traveled by the car. So it's very easy to calculate the distance of the car from the velocity time graph. But in most real life cases, the velocity time graph is not a straight line like this. Instead, it's usually a curve like this. In this case, what will be the distance traveled? Well, we can apply the same logic by finding the area under this graph. But did you see that the area under this graph is not at all a regular shape? It's neither a rectangle or a triangle or a square. So faced with the big challenge of finding area of such irregular shapes, mathematicians finally devised a brilliant idea to find the area. And we are going to see what that idea is. Let's take the same curve and uh, name it as y equal to f of x. Let the starting point be a and the ending point be b. Now the x coordinate of a or the abscissa of a, let it be small a and the abscissa of b, let it be as small b. So friends, what we are going to do is divide the region under the curve into rectangles of equal thickness. So let the thickness of each rectangle be h. Now if the number of rectangles is n, we can easily find out that h is equal to b minus a by n. So the area of the strip a p1 q1 l is the sum of the areas of a r1 q1 l and that of the shaded region a p1 r1. Unfortunately, we still cannot find the area of the region a p1 r1 which is shaded. So what we do is we divide the same region under the curve into more number of rectangles, see, like this. So what happens? The thickness of each rectangle automatically has to reduce. And thankfully, the area of the shaded region is also reducing. So what do we do? Let's divide the same region into even more number of rectangles. See, even more. Did you notice the difference in the size of the shaded areas? Yes, now the size of the shaded area has reduced to a great extent. And as the number of rectangles tends to infinity, the shaded area will be negligible. And we can safely say that the area of the strip is equal to the area of the rectangle. Let's also decide what will be the coordinates of any point on this curve. Yes, they will be x, f of x where the x is the x coordinate or the abscissa of that point and the ordinate or the y coordinate will be f of x. Now with this knowledge, we can easily say that the coordinates of point a will be a, f of a where the abscissa is a and the ordinate is going to be f of a. So the length of the first strip will be the ordinate of a which is f of a. Now remember friends that as n is tending to infinity, each strip is now going to be treated like a rectangle. So the length of the rectangle we already know is going to be length into breadth. So what will be the area of the first strip? Yes, it will be f of a times h. In this way, we can find the area of the second strip, the third strip and so on. So what will be the area of any general strip? Yes, it will be f of a plus rh times h where r is from 0 to n minus 1. Now the area of all these n strips will be the summation of the areas of each strip. Now summation also means the symbol sigma. So this is the expression that we get. Now to simplify things a little bit, let's take a plus rh to be x. So when I put r as 0, 
x1 is going to be a when i put r as 1 x2 will be a plus h and so on so what will be x2 minus x1 yes it will be h itself that is the thickness but what is x2 minus x1 yes it is the change in the value of x and change is always denoted by delta so x2 minus x1 is delta x which means my thickness or h is going to be delta x so let's replace h with delta x and this is the new expression that we get now as the number of rectangles or n tends to infinity the thickness or h tends to zero and what is h yes delta x so delta x is also tending to zero but when that happens we know that delta x turns into dx we have learned that in differentiation also the summation of these infinite number of strips need to be shown differently so this sigma is now going to be replaced by the elongated s so replacing delta x with dx and sigma by the elongated s the area of the region changes from this expression into this expression so the elongated s symbol is known as integral and the area under the region of the curve which we were unable to find before can now be easily found as the integral of the curve f of x from a which is known as the lower limit till b which is known as the upper limit now in our example this curve was the velocity time curve so the distance traveled by the car will now be easily calculated using integration even the area of this irregular shape can be easily found by integrating the function or the functions that describe this shape so friends we can say that the process of continuously adding infinite number of rectangles of extremely small thickness dx is known as integration whereas the process of dividing a given region into infinite number of rectangles of extremely small thickness dx is known as differentiation so by this time you would have already realized that integration and differentiation are the complete opposites of each other in fact by integrating the derivative of a function we can actually get back the original function so here as you can see integral of f dash x dx is equal to f of x plus c where c is the constant so friends i hope that you found this video on integration useful if so please do like and share the video consider subscribing to enjoy math and please leave your comments and feedback in the comment section below so till we meet again take care